There is light out of darkness. Darkness can be the incubator in the atmosphere of new life. Hi, I'm Father Cedric Bazania, the host of Live With Passion. I am so glad that you tuned into the program because I'm gonna be talking about light out of darkness. Let me proclaim to you the Gospel of John chapter 12. And those who went to the feast were some Greeks. They came to Philip and he went to his brother Andrew and together they told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it just remains a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So Greeks came to the feast and they wanted to see Jesus. What is this talking about? What, who are the Greeks? Of course, Greeks were the philosophers. And we all know that. I studied philosophy in college as a preparation for priesthood. And I love the study of philosophy. I studied all kinds of different disciplines. For example, the Sophics and the Cynics, the Epicureans, the Stoics. I studied Aristotle and Plato and Socrates and Pythagoras. And what were the Greeks doing? They were coming to Jesus wanting a philosophy And I remember studying philosophy, I learned all these different ideas and all these different notions and all these different opinions, all these different philosophies. And in my philosophy class, this was at the Southern Illinois University at Carbondale, where I studied philosophy, again, as a preparation for priesthood, really intrigued me. I I loved all these different ideas, some better than others. And I remember we had a class project. Everybody had to study the philosophers and come up with some type of a project that they wanted to create. And my particular project was I decided to create a sundial. As you may not know, sundials came from the philosophers, the Greeks, the Egyptians way back when. And so I had to do it from scratch. I had to learn about how the latitude of where you are determines how you make the gnome so that the sun can shine on it. And so I created this sundial and I put something, sundials usually have a a saying or a slogan, and I put, let there be light, believe in the light. And I think that's significant as you watch this program. No matter what time it is in your life, and we all go through different seasons, let there be light especially if you're going through a time of darkness, because out of darkness can come great light. That's what God did. Out of the darkness and the chaos, he said, let there be light. And I want to speak that into your heart right now. Let there be light. You know, there's a saying that says, right before dawn, there can be the greatest darkness. So expect a dawn in your life because if you're going through a darkness, a light is about to occur. So the Greeks came to Jesus and they said, Jesus, give us a philosophy. We've studied Aristotle and Plato and all these others. We're looking for something that works. You know what philosophers do? They ask questions. What is reality? What's the meaning of life? How can I be happy? This is what's happening now. These Greek people are coming to Jesus. We want to see Jesus. And so Jesus did, he gave them a philosophy. It was a brand new philosophy, one I'm sure that they've never heard and one that you've heard that maybe you don't know about. And the philosophy was mind blowing and earth shaking. And they probably thought, what is this? What what is he saying? When they asked Jesus for a philosophy, he said, get this now, I know you've heard it. Unless a grain of wheat fall into the ground and die, unless it dies, it just remains a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Wow. 
I have studied philosophy, <laughs> and I never heard anything like that before. I mean, I heard about how you can be happy from Aristotle and Plato and his transcendence and all these different type things, but I've never heard about dying in darkness leading to new life. That's exactly, really, we call that the Paschal mystery in Catholicism. That's exactly what Jesus was pronouncing. They came, they wanted to know, they wanted a new philosophy, and they got something more than they could handle. Light out of darkness. Life out of death. So let me explain that to you because especially if you're going through a season of darkness in your life right now, I want you to know that light is on the way. A new season is coming. And even if you aren't going through darkness, we all do it different seasons in our life and you need to believe. You see, this series is called A Different Spirit. And what that means is as Christians, we aren't like the rest of the world. When we encounter darkness, we believe that there's something more. When we encounter death of a loved one or even in our own life, the deaths that come, we believe that there's going to be resurrection and new life. Now the world, they see darkness and they say, that's it. I'm stuck in it. They see death, they say, that's it. There's nothing more. But we have a different spirit. That's what the Bible tells us about Caleb. He was of a different spirit. He was entering the promised land because he had a different attitude than all the rest. All the rest saw giants, but he saw opportunity. He said, we are well able. So when I lived in California at the retreat center in Sacramento, I used to go down to Sequoia National Park, down by Fresno area, south of Sacramento. And I saw the largest living tree on earth. It's called the General Sherman tree. Get this. 2,500 years old, that's from before Christ, 275 feet high, and it weighs 4 million pounds. So there's this huge, largest living tree on Earth. You know, people come to see it from all around the world, and you have to know, it all started with a little teeny itsy bitsy seed that was planted in darkness. And in the darkness, in the pressure, there was a death, the death of the seed. It, it broke open, and this new life sprouted up, and then this explosive growth into this huge General Sherman tree, which now people visit. And so I believe that it's in the pressure and in the darkness. This is a parable from creation itself. In the darkness and in the pressure where we're, we're planted, we can explode into new growth and have fruit in our life. That's exactly what Jesus was talking about when he talked about a death has to occur unless a grain of wheat falls in the ground and dies, it just remains alone. But if it dies, it bears fruit. And God wants fruit from us. You have to understand that. The first commandment in the Bible was be fruitful and multiply. And the fruit that God wants is he wants a deep relationship with us he wants us to grow, and he wants us to realize our potential to live with passion. So in order for that to happen, there has to be a death, a darkness, a, a, a sprouting, a new growth. So I want you to know that the darknesses of our life, the pressure of our life, the deaths of our life can be the incubator. It can be the atmosphere of new life. If you are going through an addiction right now, if you have gone into some type of a grieving because you've lost somebody that you love, if you are struggling with a relationship, if you are dealing with physical pain and physical disease, you know, all the, the deaths and the darknesses and the hardships of life, I want you to know that that can be the incubator of new life. See, we have a different spirit. We don't just look at the exterior. Just like God, we don't just look at the outside. We look at the heart. And it's the same way in our life. We have to look deeper than just circumstances. Circumstances can lead to more. Darkness can lead to light. We have a different spirit as believers. So I want you to know that whatever you're going through, it can be the incubator of new life. For example, your existence came from darkness. What do I mean by that? Sperm in the egg, fertilized, growth. 
you developed in your mother's womb in the darkness, and then you came to be. That's a parable for life itself. In darkness, that's the incubator of new life. So if there's a dark moment in your life right now, realize that you're just doing what happened in the beginning of your life anyway. You grew from darkness. You matured. And notice, sometimes it takes time. <laughs> when we're in a dark time, like an addiction or something else, grieving, we want it to be over with now. <laughs> it's like, get rid of this. I can't stand this. Don't you hear my prayer? Yes, God hears your prayer. But notice the gestation period in a mother's womb is nine months. It takes time to develop and to grow. So don't lose patience. Realize that sometimes it takes a little time. That's a song by Amy Grant. Sometimes things take time. But don't give up. Be patient. So let me talk about a few other things. I think about the composer Beethoven. I read about his life, arguably the greatest composer that ever lived. But at 26 years old, just as a young man, here's this pianist, this great composer, composing symphonies. He began to lose his hearing. You know what a hearing is to a musician? It's like a voice to a preacher. It's devastating. He was devastated. Talk about a dark time, the darkness of deafness. He contemplated suicide. That's how devastating that was to Beethoven. But then he realized that he had a different spirit. God had put a gift in him. And being negative wasn't going to do anything. So he decided to be positive. And he made a decision. He was going to be determined to go forward. And so you know what he did? He, he composed arguably the greatest symphony. It was his ninth symphony with the Ode to Joy while he was deaf. Wow. That's called light out of darkness, light out of deafness. You know, maybe you're not deaf, but you're facing another adversity. Well, don't contemplate suicide, certainly, and don't give up and don't be negative. God has put a gift in you. You have a different spirit. Allow this blessing to come forth like Beethoven. The dark times, we can see new things. And I've studied change. I wrote a book called You Can Change. And I know as a Catholic priest, I've seen conversions and talk about change and trying to help people to go forward. The catalyst for conversion usually is a dark period of some sort. For example, the prodigal son. We've all, we all know the story. I won't tell it now, but the bottom line is uh, just a little snippet. Here's this young man who loses everything, slopping with the pigs in the mud, going through the hardest time of his life, and he has an awakening. He comes to his senses. In the 12-step program, that's called an intervention, where you quit denying what's going on, and you accept the fact that you have an addiction. So because of this bottoming out experience that this young man had, he came to his father and was accepted back into the family. See, that's conversion. Conversion doesn't usually happen when things are going, everything's OK. It usually happens when there's a discomfort, a bottoming out, a darkness of some sort. I went through a dark time in my life when I was 18 years old. And it was a breakup with a girl. And after that breakup, never mind the pain and the grieving of the breakup, I was so lonely. I didn't have God in my life at that time. And I experienced what Billy Graham calls a cosmic loneliness. That's when you're lonely for God, but you don't even know it. And you're lonely for others. And it hurts. But in that darkness, in that hard time that I went through, God's light flooded me. That's when I came to a conversion. It took time. Remember what I said. It doesn't happen all at once. There's a gestation period. So if you're going through a dark time in your life, whether it be an addiction, a bottoming out of some sort, a breakup of some sort, a divorce, a hardship, a grieving, 
there's going to be some time, but in time, God knows exactly when. I don't know if you've ever, ever heard that saying, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. At the correct time, light will come flooding in for you. Don't give up. You have a different spirit. See, the world encounters break up, breakups and grieving and darkness and hardships, and they give up. They say there's no meaning to this, but not us. We have a different spirit. There is purpose and there is meaning. And because of that, we can definitely grow light out of darkness. So I believe that there's probably something very good in your future. Not probably, there is something good in your future. Light out of darkness. And I've studied the 12 step program. I did a four part series on addictions. You can find it on my website. And during that study, I found that there are thousands, if not millions of people who had gone through dark, bottoming out periods in their life, who came to a relationship with God and recovery from addictions through the darkness. And it could happen for you too. Photographers, you know what they do. They take pictures and they go to a dark room. And in the dark room, what they do is uh, they have to all the light taken out because the light at the wrong time will spoil the photo. They have to go into the dark room and they wash the negative in a chemical solution and they let it sit for a while. Again, there's that thing, that gestation period. Don't give up when nothing's happening. You're being developed in the darkness. That's exactly what happens. So, the beautiful wedding pictures and the pictures of creation and mountains and sunsets and all different things, those beautiful pictures that you see from professional photographers are developed in darkness. Think about St. Paul of the Cross. He was the founder of our religious community. I'm not only a Catholic priest, I'm a religious priest. Franciscans you've heard of and Jesuits, Dominicans, Redemptorists. I'm a passionist. We have a dedication to the cross of Christ, to the passion of Christ. And St. Paul of the Cross lived in the 1700s, wanted to found a religious community, wanted to call it the poor of Jesus, went to the Pope Benedict XIV. He went to the Vatican, wanted an audience with him. Here he is, 19 years old, barefoot, wearing this black robe. <clears throat> Shows up at the Vatican, wants an audience with the Pope, oh yeah? They threw him out. They thought he was a vagabond. They thought he was a hobo. They didn't know who he was. You're not going to get no audience with no pope. Boom, out he went. So instead of giving in to despair, there's nothing worse than the darkness of rejection. Instead of giving in to despair, he turned to prayer. Went to St. Mary Major, one of the four major basilicas in Rome, and he prayed before a crucifix in a side chapel. And it was there that he got the inkling, the insight, that God was calling him to found a community, yes, but not called the poor of Jesus, called the passion of Jesus. So I'm wearing a sign on my heart called the passion of Jesus Christ. That's what this means. And so he went back to the Pope about a month later, miraculously got let in, had an audience with the Pope, presented to him his idea about founding a community to the passion of Jesus. The Pope loved it. So out of darkness came this explosive growth. The Passionists are now in 64 countries. We preach, we minister, we proclaim the gospel, the Christ crucified and salvation in him. We do it through media, writing, chaplaincies. And this wonderful growth, like the sequoia, came forth out of darkness, the darkness of rejection. Now I want to tell any of you who have been rejected by your parents or abused or rejected by friends or betrayed that out of that darkness, something new, something explosive, light can come out of darkness. If you don't give up, remember, we're not like the rest of the world. We, are, we have a different spirit. We're like Caleb. We are well able. If God is for us, who can be against us? So then I think about Airplanes, for example. We're talking about light out of darkness. I noticed one time I was on a long flight 
to our Italy, I believe it was. And during the long flight, you know, it's an overnight flight, I, I, I looked at one of the passengers next to me and they put on these blinders to cover their eyes to help them go to sleep. And in that darkness, in the darkness of sleep, you may not know this, but it's important, something called melatonin is developed out of that darkness. Melatonin helps us with memory. We all need memory. So in other words, darkness can bring us something that we need. For all of us, there are times in our life when we actually need darkness. You heard about the dark ages years ago, our culture. Well, that was a time of a lack of literature. The culture wasn't developing very well. There was religious struggles, religious conflicts. That was followed by the Renaissance and then by the Enlightenment. So out of the darkness came something new, enlightenment, light. And artists like da Vinci, Michelangelo, St. Peter's Basilica, if you've ever seen it, came to be. See, the darkness can be the incubator of something good. You have a different spirit. Don't just say it's dark and woe is me. Say something good's gonna happen out of this and something good will. Live with hope. Many of you like to drink wine. Well, you all know about wine. It, once it's formed and they put it into vats, they put it into a cellar for a little while, for a little while, for a gestation period, in order for it to, to uh, mature. And you know, I remember that saying from that commercial, we will sell no wine before it's time. The wine needs to be given time in the darkness of the cellar, in the coolness of the cellar, in order to develop and become mature and taste right. And God's the same way. He, he knows, he's a connoisseur, not only of wine, but of hearts. And he will not get you out of the darkness before your time, that gestation period. But when it's time, at the right moment, by the way, if light comes into that cellar at the wrong moment, the, the wine will spoil. Same as the photographer. At the right moment, the light will come for you. You're in a gestation period, a season, and you will change. So in my life, there's been breakups and bottoming outs, and I've been in the cellar at times feeling like I've been just put on a shelf but I haven't lost hope. I've stayed in trust, believing that God is working and he has been at work and the light does come. I love that song. There's got to be a morning after. It comes from the Poseidon Adventure. That's one of my theme songs sung by Maureen McGovern. There's got to be a morning after. There's always hope no matter how your ship is flipped. Then the, in the early church, really quickly, there was persecution and it almost died out. They were being martyred, they were being killed. But if you read the Acts of the Apostles, even though people were being put to death and jailed and beaten and suffering, and this is what I learned in the seminary, in the difficult, dark days of the early church, that's what led to their explosive growth. I don't know if you've ever seen a dandelion seed when they blow it and the seeds go everywhere. That's kind of what it was like in the early church. They tried to, they being the people, the unbelievers, the evil at that time tried to squash the church, but actually what happened was it led to its growth. That's why Tertullian said that the martyrs are the seed of the new church. And so out of darkness, the church spread and grew. So I've given you numerous examples here, trying to convince you, to persuade you that darkness isn't necessarily a bad thing in life. And because we are of a different spirit, because we're believers, just because we encounter darkness doesn't mean that it's all over. And I've talked to you about the early church and how it spread. Beethoven in his deafness, St. Paul of the Cross in his rejection, me in a breakup with a girl in loneliness, babies and how we develop in darkness, wine and how it's put in a cellar, photos and how they develop, the dark ages and how it turned into the enlightenment. Seeds that die and become new life. Greeks came to Jesus and they said, we've heard it, you're a great teacher, give us a new philosophy. We've heard about 
Plato and Socrates and Aristotle and Pythagoras and all the rest. We want something new. We want something that works. What's the meaning of life? And Jesus gave them something, and I hope you get this, something so mind-blowing, something so earth-shattering. Unless the seed fall into the ground and die, it just remains a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it bears fruit. And I want you to know that in your darkness and in your death, you can grow and explode like the mighty sequoia. Don't just live, live with passion. Jesus. I want you to believe that light can come out of any darkness. I got a letter from a man who was in prison and that can be a dark place, but it can also be a positive place where rehabilitation can occur and great things can occur. But basically what he said is this, he said, what started as an attempt just to fill my time in prison has become an education for me. I'm now in a Bible college, and I believe I've found God's calling for my life. Wow. It wasn't just Joseph in prison that God moved in his life. God moved in this man's life also. And I'm believing that out of any darkness, whether it be prison or a darkness of a breakup or a darkness of a hardship in your life, you can find new life and you can find light. I want to interest you in my book called Rise. And it's a book that talks about life rising out of hardships and brokenness and darkness. There's got to be a morning after. There is light out of darkness. And I want to convince you of that because we have a different spirit. We are believers. So this book, Rise, will really help you no matter what you're facing, whether you're in prison or whether you're going through just a hardship in your life. And it will help you to experience resurrection right now. Whenever you purchase any of my books, or buy the DVD of this program, supports my program so that I can reach out throughout the world. Thank you also for all my partners and all my benefactors, the, all of you who are making donations. I love hearing from you. Thank you for writing me. Write me at that address. Call that number. Visit my website. I love it when I hear from you. And thank you also for all the donations. It really supports me so that I can reach out with Live With Passion and the positive message of the gospel throughout the world. Don't just live, live with passion. Thank you. Jesus died on the cross and rose again so that we might be saved and have eternal life. The greatest and most influential event in human history was Jesus' resurrection. But the resurrection wasn't just one historical moment. A resurrected life can happen every day. In Father Cedric's book, Rise, you can learn how to embrace the risen life, a life of passion, stability, and healing. Father Cedric's book, Rise, reveals how to live a fulfilled life, how to conquer addictions, how to overcome your past, and rise from indifference to make a difference. In this book, you'll learn how to experience resurrection today. Call right now to get this special offer. Call 844-FATHER-C. That's 844-328-4372. Or go to frcedric.org or write us at Father Cedric Ministries, 430 Bunker Hill Road, Houston, Texas, 77024. 100% of your donations will be used to produce and air Live With Passion.